Now we're going to take a look at uh, one of the most important things uh, that we deal with, and those are lines. Lines are um, extremely useful um, in many aspects of mathematics, and so we have to have a very good understanding of them. All right, the first thing to deal with with lines is slope. All right, so if you have uh, two points, which we're going to represent as uh, x1, y1, and x2, y2, and we don't want the x values to be the same, uh, then the slope of these of the line through these points is, and so we have a bunch of different uh, ways that we denote this. Uh, the common single letter m for slope. We also do the change in y over the change in x. So this uh, delta denotes change. All right. So that change would be y2 minus y1 in y, and the change in x would be x2 minus x1. And when we're thinking graphically, it's often nice to think of this as the rise over the run. Basically, how much, up, how far up you're going on a graph over how far to the right you're going. So that's a positive rise and a positive run, okay? So let's just see a simple calculation here. What is the slope of the line passing through 8, 2, and 3, negative 1? So basically, um, I could consider this first one to be x1, y1, and the second one to be x2, y2. And so I could do my slope just as y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Very important. Remember, it is the change in y over the change in x. y is in the numerator. All right, so uh, y2 is negative 1 minus y1 is 2 over x2 is 3 minus x1 is 8. So we would get negative 3 over negative 5 or 3 over 5. Okay, so we were able to calculate that slope. Now let me point out a couple of things. Would Did we have to choose the first point to be the 1 point and the second point to be the 2 point? No. As long as we're consistent and we associate the correct y's with the correct x's, then we could have done it the other way around, in which case we would have gotten, instead of getting negative 3 over negative 5, we would have gotten 3 over 5, but those two are the same values of slope. The other interesting piece is that we are often going to look at fractions like negative 3 over negative 5 in conjunction with 3 over 5 in that when we look at a graph, when we say a slope of 3 over 5, that's basically going to be up 3 to the right 5. When we say negative 3 over negative 5, that's going to be down 3 and then back to the left 5. Now that's the same, going to put you on the same line either way, but it's good for moving around the graph. All right, speaking of graphs, what do the graphs of lines look like? And specifically, how does that relate to its slope? All right, so a positive slope would be a line looking something like that, okay? Where when you go up in y, you go to the right in x, okay? So that's a positive slope there, all right? A negative slope would look something like that. In other words, we're going to go down in y and to the right in x. All right, so the first one positive slope, second one negative slope. And basically when we say it's going up, we're always talking about the um, convention of looking from left to right like the x-axis goes. So we would say the positive one is going up, the negative one is going down. All right, zero slope, well, that would be a horizontal line. Well, think about it. What does zero slope mean? It means um, the numerator in our 
y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. If you're going to have a fraction that has zero slope, that means the numerator equals zero. Okay? And that makes sense. Basically, the y values are not changing with all the x's. Now, the other one is the undefined slope. So that would be a vertical line. Let's think why it's undefined. Remember, you have y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Now, the x's are all the same, and the y's are different. So that means the x2 minus x1 is going to be 0. And then we can't allow a 0 in the denominator, hence undefined. All right. So with the 0 slope, you have different x values but the same y values. With an undefined slope you have different y values but the same x value. So that's what they look like on a graph. Now let's see how we often represent these lines. There are um, four very common, well three very common forms and then special cases. So the slope intercept is uh, the most well-known one and the one we see most often um, because as we're going to see that's your y equals mx plus b. The point slope is a useful form for um, creating a line and the general form, although we're not going to use it as much, um, is good um, in how it can uh, nicely represent a line in terms of coefficients of x and y. All right, and then we'll look at the special cases of horizontal and vertical lines, which may not fit properly into some of the previous forms. All right, the slope-intercept form is the one we see most often, and that's y equals mx plus b, and that's the slope m and the y-intercept b. That's why slope-intercept, okay? So we can see very clearly if we have a line in the slope intercept form it's very easy to pick out the slope because that's just uh, what's multiplying x and it's very easy to see with the y-intercept that's just the number uh, being added uh, on at the end. So now let's look about uh, graphing this sort of thing. So I'm going to make um, set of axes here and it's going to be important to kind of do our best to grid this somewhat nicely so there are points uh, end up in the right places but we'll try okay so here's how we could uh, graph this well, our y-intercept, actually, hold on, I'm going to make these y's a little smaller, just so that I can fit more points in. All right, so our y-intercept is 3. That means we're at 3 on the y-axis. All right, and then what we're saying is the slope is 2. So a slope of 2 is like 2 over 1. So that would be up 2 and over 1. Up 2 over 1. All right, and then we could do it again. Go up 2 and over 1. And there we are. Okay, but it's what's nice to be able to do is move both ways. So realize that you can get 2 as negative 2 over negative 1. So that means up negative 2 to the right negative 1, or in other words, down 2, left 1. So down 1, down 2 to the left 1 ends us right there. And then down 1, down 2 to the left 1 ends us there. We could keep going, down 2 over 1. All right, now I have all these points, and I can nicely put in my line y equals 2x plus 3. 
So there we nicely have the uh, line. Okay, what are the slope and y-intercept of the line 5x plus 2y minus 3 equals 0? Well, again, this is not in y-intercept form, in slope-intercept form. So we have to do that if we're going to nicely pick it out. 5x plus 2y minus 3 equals 0. So getting it in the slope-intercept really means solve for y. So I'm going to have 2y equals negative 5x when I subtract 5x over and then add 3 over. And then I'm going to divide everything by 2. So y is negative 5 halves x plus 3 over 2. And now I see that it's really easy for me to take out my slope, whoops, my slope of, neg of negative 5 over 2, and my y-intercept, usually denoted as b, is 3 over 2.